Okay, good morning everyone. Uh, I'm Katrina Munch. I'm an organizational consultant with Sun Life's Integrated Health Solutions Department. And I'm going to be talking to you today about the era of agile and embracing the changing nature of work. So with the advent of new technologies, with remote and flexible working environments, the very nature of work is changing and so are employees' expectations. So today I'm gonna to be talking to you about agile workspaces, which is the physical workspace, not to be confused with agile workflow, which we're hearing a lot about, which is an iterative form of uh, project delivery. So the real philosophy around agile work is really connecting with the idea that work is an activity and not a space. So what we're doing is we're trying to maximize space we're trading in an individual workspace for shared group spaces. And by doing this, we're allowing more flexibility and balance, opportunities for increased collaboration, and giving people more choice and flexibility in how and where they work. This idea all started back in the 1990s in Silicon Valley when people weren't um, assigned to a department. They worked in open workspaces, and they weren't judged on how and when they worked, but rather they were judged on the quality of the work that they produced. So there's many benefits to employees once they can get over the hurdle of losing their own physical workspace and having access to a home zone or a neighborhood. This home zone or neighborhood offers an employee more um, different types of spaces that better suits the types of work that we do throughout the day. So when we think of what those spaces are in the day, there is opportunity for collaboration spaces, so where employees gather to work together in an open space. There's communication spaces, so your traditional meeting rooms, uh, places for training. There's concentration spaces, so the space where you want to go and be in if you're trying to do some independent and focused work. And if you have an agile work environment and you don't have your own desk every day, then you need a spot for storage. So a place where you're going to put your personal effects since they don't sit at your desk. Um, mine's full of shoes, can't walk uh, from Union Station in these. So it's important that you have a, a place that you can put your things. So over the past few years, Sun Life has really been on a journey to transform our culture. What we were looking to do is offer our employees a vibrant and innovative space to work. At our prior location, we had 90% of our office space was being used for your traditional cubicles and offices. However, we found at any given time, 40% of that space was being unused in a given day. And really what that resulted in is on any given day as well, over 50% of our employees couldn't find space to do the work that they were required to do. We spent a lot of time searching for meeting rooms. We could never find one. Walking between our two buildings, trying to get a meeting room, or settling for less than optimal spaces to have a meeting. Impromptu meetings in spaces where we were disturbing our coworkers that were trying to doing focused and concentrated work. So that space really wasn't working for us. And that's the opportunity that Sun Life wanted to take advantage of. And with that came the advent of developing our new agile workspace. So with this shift, uh, Sun Life really had the ability to improve our work environment. Uh, this has really increased engagement by allowing employees flexibility and more collaboration in how and where they work. We've really induced, reduced our environmental footprint. So if you think that we're uh, optimizing our space now when much of our space was unused, our new global headquarters also is targeting a LEEDS Platinum certification, which means our office tower will use 50% less energy than a traditional office tower, as well as the positive financial impact. So if you think of downtown real estate costs, and we had 40% of our space unused, now we are maximizing our space. So here's some pictures here. Uh, this is the results. We've launched our opening to our global headquarters, uh, downtown Toronto at 1 York Street to over 2,000 employees. And our new space now boasts over 400 collaboration and meeting spaces. We have integrated technology throughout the building. We have open uh, concept workstations and different styles of workstations to choose from. 
All of our desks are sit-stand. We have meditation rooms. We have religious observance rooms. We have nap rooms, private nap rooms. We have bike lockers. We have showers. We have pleasant places to walk nearby and lots of amenities all supporting our employees to give them flexibility and autonomy and make their day more convenient. So there was a lot of learning um, in making this transition. We had over 2,000 employees make this transition. And really what we've learned that's very important, and this is going to build on a lot of the topics that we've heard today, is really the need to reinforce the need for team cohesion. So now that we're not sharing the same physical space, Monday to Friday, 9 to 5, the traditional sort of organic office water cooler chat is not going to happen. So we need to be very thoughtful and very creative and find what works for our team and our culture to build that team cohesion. The etiquette is another issue. Um, once we were in the implementation phase, we found that people weren't respecting the etiquette. So people sitting themselves down in a desk they didn't book. Uh, people booking a desk and then not coming in and using it, usually the prime desks right by the windows. As well as people trying to be a resident in an agile environment. So someone trying to book the same desk every single day and leaving their personal effects there. Another really, really important one is change ambassadors. These are really integral to this whole cultural shift. We've really uh, understood that people, some people, have a very strong emotional attachment to their physical workspace. And to make this shift, you really need your people in place from the pre-move phase to the move-in phase and then into your sustainment plan to provide that coaching and reminder of all the positives that they're gaining and shifting to this new style of work. Some of the obvious constructive feedback obviously would have been noise, and now that we're in a more open concept workstation, and uh, the setup and takedown time. Those things have, have died down uh, with respect to the noise. Uh, people now are more comfortable in understanding um, how they work, so if they need to go into a concentration space because they're doing um, working on their own, then they can do that. They can go to a different area, book a different desk, and um, that accounts for that. Location is one piece that's important for our people leaders to really, again, embrace that cultural shift that people shouldn't be judged based on their time and visibility in the office, but rather on the quality of the work that they perform. So just really understanding if Agile is right for your business. The things to consider is really understanding how much of your office space is being used. Another important thing is, is your organization ready to make a cultural shift? Is your senior leadership wanting to move towards having increased collaboration and innovation, which is really a trend in our industry when we think about the fast-paced, globalized uh, economy that we're in? Testing and learning is essential. There were multiple pilots over a year and a half prior to our adopting this style of work where we um, tested many different processes and furniture and how people would work best and what would work for Sun Life in this uh, transition. Obviously, security and privacy has to be considered. And who needs to be agile? So if you move into um, shifting your workspace, not everybody uh, needs to be agile at the beginning. There may even be something that you think of like a, a health concern, somebody with a nut allergy. They can't have a shared space. Or if you have people that have special equipment needs, like your desktop publishers, et cetera, that may not be suitable for them. So overall, there's lots of choice and lots of flexibility if you're thinking of shifting your organization into an agile workspace. But I think the most important things is the testing and learning, having your change ambassadors in place, especially in the sustainment part, so ongoing coaching can take place, and as well as keeping in mind how you're going to be thoughtful about team cohesion going forward. Thank you.